So how do you figure out how many valence electrons there are for a certain element? Well, you have to look at the group that it's in. So remember, groups are going to be the columns that are going up and down, whereas the periods are going to be the rows that are going left to right. So you can think of periods like in a sentence, you would read that left to right, whereas the groups you can think of as growing up. So these would be the columns that are going up and down, the G for growing. And uh, this section right here is known as the transition metals. And uh, they're a little weird in regards to valence electrons, so we're not going to worry about that for now, and you'll most likely never be asked about that either. So this first column or group right here is known as 1A, 1 for a Roman numeral and then the letter A. And then this group right here is 2a, and then if we start over here, we have 3a, 4a, 5a, 6a, 7a, and 8a. So you have to look at these groups to figure out how many valence electrons are in that element. So, for example, in group 1a, all of these elements are going to have one valence electron. And in 2a, they're going to have two valence electrons. And then in 3a, they're going to have three valence electrons, 4a, 4, 5a, 5, 6a, six valence electrons, 7a, seven valence electrons. And then this last group right here, 8a, is going to have eight valence electrons with the exception of helium, which has two valence electrons. So let's just uh, take a look at some examples. So how many valence electrons would lithium have? This would have one valence electrons and uh, magnesium would have two valence electrons because it's in group 2a. Uh, aluminum would have three valence electrons and so forth. So you just need to look at which group that it's going to be located in in order to determine the number of valence electrons that it's going to have.